you think huge, right? But you have to kind of understand the properties of numbers between 0 and 1. Like, like if I take a number out here, it's like 2, right? And I start raising that to bigger powers, it gets bigger, right? 2 squared, 2 cubed, those get big. But what if you take a number like 1 half and you raise it to, a, like what if you square 1 half? It gets smaller, right? What if I cube 1 half? 1 eighth gets smaller, right? In fact, if you pick numbers, but any number between 0 and 1 and raise it to a power, it gets smaller. There's this misconception that, hey, if I give you a number and I say square it, everyone thinks, oh, it gets bigger automatically. That's not true. If you take a number between 0 and 1 and square it, it gets smaller. So when that base is trying to get small, the exponent comes and in, in starts raising it to higher powers, and it actually gets smaller faster. So that one would go where? It would go to zero extremely fast. So all these in blue here are not indeterminate forms. These are things we know the answer for. Uh, we already knew this. Infinity times infinity is infinity, right? Yeah, that's that one, that commercial. Uh, I feel like I'm miss okay. Infinity plus infinity is still infinity, right? All right, so maybe we'll stumble acro across some others where you think they're bad, but the the ones that we are interested in are the ones that I showed you before here. Let me see here. These are our indeterminate forms right here. Okay. And I don't have them memorized. I just think about them. You know, what's zero to zero? Well, you know, like I'm explaining it to you is the way that I think about it. So, so you don't really need to memorize as long as you understand, like, how numbers work. Uh, full page. All right. So that leads us to L'Hopital's rule. Okay. L'Hopital... This rule is, is fabulous. L'Hopital was a mathematician. He didn't do a whole, whole lot as far as like great mathematicians are concerned. Like he's not, he's not Isaac Newton, okay? Um, he's not a lot of mathematicians. But this rule that he came up with is super powerful, super useful. And one of the harder um, theorems to prove in calculus is this one right here. Um, so here's what he, we're just going to come up with his, with his result. L'Hopital said basically, if you're ever taking a limit, okay, and it doesn't even matter, x is going to, does not matter, okay, x is going to a box. It could be going to 2, to 0, to infinity, to 1, it doesn't matter. x is headed somewhere. And you have f of x over g of x. So you've got two different functions, right? Maybe the top is sine x, maybe the bottom is x. Maybe the top is x squared minus 2 and the bottom is something else. But you've got a fraction, right? If that limit goes to, so the arrow means that limit goes to infinity over infinity, positive or negative, doesn't matter, or 0 over 0, which were the two, the first two that we really ever ran into, right? L'Hopital says if you ever get limits that look like this, then... If the limit exists, it's equal to, so he's saying, look, if you ever get infinity over infinity or zero over zero, then if there is an answer, okay, if you can get an answer, instead of looking at that limit, you can look at this one. The limit as x goes to 0, or x goes to something, of f prime of x over g prime of x. So somehow there's a very, very 
strong relationship between the function f divided by g and how that behaves compared to how their derivatives behave as a quotient. This is not quotient rule, though. Do you all see that? Like, we're not taking quotient rule. We're just taking derivative of top and bottom and comparing that and finding a new limit and seeing if we can get an answer. So if there's an answer to the top one, it's the same as the answer to this one. So let's see how this is going to work, okay? First example. Limit x goes to 2, x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. Okay, this is one of the first limits that we ever did in this class where we were um, looking at it saying, okay, everyone, let's plug 2 in and let's see what we get. And I said, draw a little arrow, show me what's happening. So plug 2 in, what do you get? 0 over 0, right? Now, how would we do this before L'Hopital? What would you do to that to figure out that limit? Some algebra, right? What algebra would you do on that one? Factor the difference of squares on top, right? And then you would cancel it. Remember that? Okay, but screw all that now. Zero over zero is an indeterminate form. And L'Hopital says that if you want to try and figure out that limit, all you have to look at is this new limit. Now, there's two different notations that books use usually to let you know, to let the reader know they're, they are applying L'Hopital's rule. A lot of books put a little H over the equal sign. An H over the equal sign. So what I'm saying is that that limit up there is equal to this limit by L'Hopital's rule, by putting the H there. I don't do it that way. I put an L and I circle it. And I'm not sure if I saw that in a book or I just did that wrong once and just kept doing it for the rest of my life. But that's the way I do it. All right, you can do an H or an L, but you have to do something. You can't say that limit's equal to that because they're not always equal. It has to be 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity for that to work. Okay, so limit of, now L'Hopital says all you have to do is what? Differentiate the top and bottom separately, right? No quotient rule, just take derivative of top. Take, what's the derivative of top? 2x over 1. Now plug 2 in, and what do you get? 4. Done. And if you check it, okay, if we were to go back and do it the old school style, the way we did it before L'Hopital's rule, right, you would have factored the top and bottom. Then you would have canceled, and then you would have said, what, plug in 2 and you get 4, right? I'm going to address your frustration in a second, because I know you're somewhat frustrated. Okay, this example. Uh, limit x goes to 0, tangent 6x over sine... 3x. Now, do you all remember how we would have done this before? This was that problem where I showed you how to like pull everything apart and then it's like we could really use a 3x there so we make it appear and then we have to start sliding things around. Remember that? Okay, well, let's check the form first. What's tangent of 0? Zero? 0. What's sine of 0? So do we have an indeterminate form that we can apply L'Hopital's rule to. Yes. So I'm going to come in here and apply L'Hopital's rule. Limit x goes to 0. I just need the derivative of top and bottom separately. So what's the derivative of tangent x? Secant squared, sorry, I said tangent x. Secant squared 6x. Careful here now. Chain rule on the top. Times 6. Good. Everyone understand that you took the derivative of tangent to give you the secant squared 6x, but then you go inside and take derivative of 6x, which is 6. All over, cosine 3x times 3. Now, go ahead. Try it. Remember, secant is 1 over cosine, isn't it? So what is secant of 0? 
Well, cosine of zero is one, isn't it? So secant of zero is one. One squared is one. So you get what on top there? Six. And then again, cosine of one on, I mean, cosine of zero on the bottom is one. One times three is three. The answer is two. Isn't that nice? How about this one? This is one that I asked you to memorize. Every calculus student should know this. Limit x goes to 0 of sine x over x is 1, right? I just told you that. I said take it on faith. And I said if you wanted to know why it's true, you could come by my office. I could prove it to you. And, I, and there's a real long proof of it. But once L'Hopital came up with this rule, it's simple. Because this does go to 0 over 0. But by L'Hopital's rule, I can just do derivative of top and bottom and get what? Cosine x on top and on the bottom, 1. And what's uh, cosine 0? 1. 1 over 1 is 1. I kind of already know what you're thinking, but I have a good answer to some of your questions that I think some of you are toiling with in your minds. How about this one? Limit x goes to 0, x cubed minus mm, 4x squared minus 3x plus 1 ugh, over x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus x. So where is that headed, first of all? Uh, shit, hold on. I meant to go to infinity. Pardon me. Sorry. I meant to go to infinity. The numerators become infinite, denominators become infinite, so we've got infinity over infinity, right? Can you use L'Hopital's rule if you have infinity over infinity? Yes. All right, so I come in here with L'Hopital. And I get 3x squared minus 8x minus 3 all over 4x cubed minus 10x plus 1. Infinity over infinity. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, shit, that didn't help, right? But the great thing about L'Hopital's rule is that you can continue to use it until your limit becomes something you can evaluate. As long as the next step down gave you infinity over infinity again, you can go again. So we go L'Hopital again. So I'm doing a second application of L'Hopital's rule. 6x minus 8 over 12, 12x squared minus 10. What am I getting here? Infinity over infinity again, right? Do it again. Does everyone have that written down? I've got to, I've got to move to a new page here. Everyone got that? Okay. So I was at limit. So here comes L'Hopital. So it's going to be limit as x goes to infinity. What was it? 6 now over what? 24x? Is that it? Yeah? You all agree? Now what do we have? That's right. We do not have L'Hopital anymore, okay? Because what we have now is fixed over infinity. And where does fixed over infinity go? Zero. You, so the good